Uh, item two, update on COVID-19 small business loans. Uh, Mr. Fana. Good morning, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, Administrator Johnson. So back in uh, early, early on in the COVID uh, response, the city implemented a COVID-19 economic assistance program for small businesses. And we were one of the first out of the gate. And uh, Chris Rug, who was our director for economic development, who's in the room, uh, also played a key role in implementing this program. So I wanted to recognize his contributions as well as others who were involved, including the, uh, the CRA and the Downtown Development Authority and, and our private sector partners that I'll talk about. So just to refresh your memory, this was approved through Resolution 120. There were micro loans from, uh, between five and ten thousand dollars. Interest only payments for the first twelve months. Uh, that interest rate was three, is three point two five. Uh, the funding again was provided by the city, the CRA, and the DDA. And we did get a small grant also through uh, the um, the Knight Foundation. I think it was twenty five thousand. Is that right, Chris? Fifty thousand. All right, fifty thousand dollars from the Knight Foundation, and then. Um, the city, along with the Urban League of Palm Beach County, who we partnered with, conducted the underwriting on the loans, and then we partnered with Valley National Bank to do the loan issuance and provide the loan servicing, and that has gone well. Some of the criteria that was used, of course, they had to be based in the city, operational for 18 or more months, had gross revenues under a million dollars, liquid assets under $150,000. So here you see some of the numbers. We had 127 completed applications that we received online. We had a lot more that were incomplete that never actually finished the process, but uh, the ones that were completed were 127. 47 of those were denied or withdrawn. A lot of times uh, they, were out of the, they weren't even in the city or they just withdrew their application because uh, they found other ways to, to get funding. 33 remain unfunded and then 47 got funded. Here you see a map of the distribution of where these loans were provided. Uh, so you see it's pretty well distributed. Uh, we obviously have a cluster within the downtown area and the area in Northwood Village where a lot of the restaurants and, and merchants reside. And because we had funds that were specifically targeting downtown and the uh, Northwood area through both the CRA and through the Downtown Development Authority. I think Rafael Clemente is here. Right, Raphael, thank the Downtown Development Authority also for stepping up quickly and being a part of this program. Oops, sorry about that. I used to kind of the budget was 259,000 in general funds and grant funds, including the uh, $50,000, 60,000, excuse me, there was another 50,000 on top of the 259, which was from the Knight Foundation, 60,000 CRA funds, 150 DDA funds. Uh, total loans that were issued were $450,915 in loans. Uh, this, this, this statistic uh, I'm pretty proud of in terms of our uh, participation from minority business community, 46% self-identified as minority-owned businesses, and then 51% self-identified as women-owned businesses, and several were both minority and women-owned businesses. So a large participation from our, both our minority and women-owned businesses. Before you move off that slide, Mr. Fauna, uh, sure. let me commend you and the others for collecting that data. Uh, what we have found uh, in uh, during COVID is that certainly with respect to the testing that was done at the beginning of COVID, and now I think to a lesser extent with the administration of vaccine, uh, there's been a failure to uh, collect data on uh, race and ethnicity, uh, which to me is a shame because um, everything we hear indicates that those communities of color are most adversely affected. And the only way that we as a uh, city, as, and it's really not the city doing it, it's the county and the state, uh, can, uh, I think, ensure uh, that we are either getting testing to the right people uh, or the vaccine to the right people is collect this information. And so I'm glad that we as a city, uh, at least, were collecting the information. Uh, and and there, uh, there will be lessons learned. I mean, after we get on the other side of the mountain, there, uh, presumably there will be some kind of actor action report, certainly at our level and hopefully even at the state and, and federal level, so that we can 
and, and, and improve our performance with the next pandemic, and there will be another one, maybe not in my lifetime, but uh, it's so important that we, we have to be intentional, I think, uh, in, in terms of devising uh, solutions which are equitable and fair. And the only way to do that is to collect data uh, about uh, racial identification and, and an ethnic identification so we can truly, truly understand whether we are doing our job uh, uh, from an equitable standpoint. So thank you for collecting that information. Yeah, and having an online portal sh certainly helped and uh, make it easy to collect the data. But and, and to grow upon that point a little bit, we also had lessons learned on some of the challenges that minority businesses face with some of these programs, whether it was this one or the PPP. And a lot of it had to do with um, the amount of information that's required and the type of information that businesses should have, but some small minority businesses don't always have. And so I've been working with Frank Hayden um, and some other uh, private sector groups to come up with another program that will also help with providing uh, more technical assistance to these small businesses so that they know the types of documentation that they need to keep in order to be able to take advantage of these programs when they come out, because that certainly was a challenge. Even, even with these numbers, there was other folks we could have helped if they would have had the right documentation in place. So here's the fun part. We did a survey recently um, of the folks who received the, uh, the loan, and we got a 40% response rate, which is pretty good. 89% um, responded either they were very or highly satisfied with the program. Again, 89% were very or highly satisfied with the online application process itself. 100% uh, rated the program critical to maintaining their operations. 53% said the program was m most used for payroll, and then a 37% was most used for rent. I think we had a couple that used it also for inventory and other uses. 89% uh, said they were able to retain jobs because of the program. Now, we also threw a question in there about um, a grant program for HEPA filtration systems. That is one thing that we can use some federal dollars that we got. And we got a 79% response rate that they would be interested in, in using a program like that. So uh, we've got a number of options of how to use these CDBG COVID funds, and that was one thing we, since we were doing a poll, wanted to see if there was going to be an interest in us moving forward, something like that, if we choose to do so, if the city commission chooses to do so. Uh, Mr. Fauna, uh, while, while I appreciate uh, the response rate, uh, it was still less than 50 percent. Was there any effort to do any follow-up for those who did not respond, uh, um, just to see if we can... In, elevate that number. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I did send a, a follow-up email requesting that they, you know, personally requesting that they respond, and then that bumped it up a little bit, but, okay, um, yeah, for the purposes of getting it on this agenda. No, 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 yeah. I, I appreciate it. But we can, I, and we and can, even though we may not have the information now, if, if maybe an additional step can be taken to see what, because again, th these are lessons learned. Sure. Uh, and if you could uh, make another round to try to get uh, information for those who are non-responsive. Yep, absolutely. Some comments we received. Thank you very much for your assistance. The process at times I'm cumbersome, but it worked. The process certainly should be streamlined. I'm pleased with the results and the terms. Thank you so much for the assistance. Uh, you see one that says that they were able to really save seven, seven employees, so that's, that, that was huge. Uh, we have lost 75% of our business, and without the loan, we probably would have closed. And there's a couple comments regarding um, the, for, the forgiveness of the loan, the future forgiveness, and I know this body has asked about that, so we wanted to make sure we captured some of that data. And there was, I think, one or two more that said something similar within their comments about requesting a forgiveness of the loan. Now, just to add, you know, this first 12 months, the, it was only interest only, so the payments that they've had to do, provide have been like $25 a month. And none of them, including there was one, there was one uh, business that did go out of business, uh, but they're still paying. So all of them have, have, have been continue to pay their loan. Uh, and again, there was lessons learned. We had, we had a great relationship with Valley National Bank. They did a, a, a nice job with us. You know, being a government entity, there were some c cumbersome processes. We had to go, the mayor has to sign every document. So we have to go through a, a process of going to our legal department, 
getting the reviewing all the documents, then it goes to the mayor, then it goes to a lot of back and forth between us and the bank, but it, we managed to make it work. Uh, so there's some lessons learned that we can tweak and we move forward on another pro 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 program similar to this. Um, but a couple policy questions for, for this body to consider. One is the loan forgiveness itself. And I'll have to look into how that would work exactly because the way we did structure this with Valley National Bank is the city took out a certificate of deposit or a couple certificate of deposits which are locked in for five years, which is the, the, learn, the loan term period. And so um, if the loans are forgiven, we may still have, you know, we'll still have the, those monies probably in the CD and we really won't have access to them other than, we, I, we can pull them out, I guess, but then we're not gonna have the, uh, the loan, t excuse me, the CD terms won't, won't apply anymore. Um, also, there's a, still a little bit of money left that we could apply. So if we went to a grant program or we're going to forgive these loans, then I would just say we look at the next two or three in line and just issue, issue a grant based on their application and we'll have to reevaluate it because some time has passed. And then whether um, there's a desire to move forward with investigating this HIPAA filtration program under a CDBG COVID funds that we received. And we wouldn't take a lot of that because we, get, we have other things that we want to fund with that program. But maybe we can provide some assistance to some of these businesses that want that particular program. So that's kind of the policy questions that I'm putting before this board and the mayors and, um, and any questions you may have, I'll be happy to answer. Well, my initial thoughts on the loan forgiveness uh, is uh, to tread lightly. Um, you know, we are a governmental entity. These are monies that we didn't necessarily have budgeted. Um, and um, I, I'm not sure I want to rush into to that. Do we have any idea, any statistics on repayment rates? Uh, how many are, are paying it in accordance with the terms of the loan? Documents. Um, yes, they're, they're none, of, none of them are default. As I mentioned, even somebody that went out of business is, is not in default. So. Okay. Okay. But I'm, I'm open to hearing from commissioners uh, their thoughts. Um, Commissioner Lambert. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate the effort that went into the survey and collecting this data. Um, the funding that, if you could go back to one of the first slides where it, outline the f who put in what funding. Yeah, that right there. The 259,000, that came from our general fund, is that correct? And then you've been talking about COVID funding from, I guess, uh, federal funding as well, but that's not included in the 259. Correct, yeah, the, you know, we, we, we put this out before Congress even was allocating right. anything. But we do have additional funding that's coming in now that we're looking to utilize and put a plan behind as well? Correct. Okay. Um, while I certainly want to make sure that the organizations, the companies that received these funds are good stewards of these funds, you know, I think the 259000 is a good investment for us to spend on, on supporting our local businesses. And I'd be in favor of, of providing them as grants, if that's the direction you're looking for. Or is that, I mean, is that what you're asking us? Is, yes. is what's our feeling on that? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Baduzzi. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, it's my understanding that all of these businesses also had probably had access to the paper check protection program uh, through the Small Business Administration, and those funds uh, certainly were forgivable. Uh, my understanding is it's a simple application, especially if you're a small uh, business, and you can have them completely forgiven. Um, you know, uh, do you have any numbers uh, with regard to the application, applicants of this program and how many of them also applied for the Paycheck Protection Program? We may have that out to look. Part of the application process did require them to answer the question that they have applied for other resources, including the, the PPP. And uh, we sent them to the um, FAU is it business. Business, minor, business portal that the FAU had set up that would help businesses apply for some of these other resources. So we did direct them to that and you know, they, 
they had to answer whether or not they did that. Uh, I'd have to then go back and look and see if there's any other data that supports it, but pretty much all of them answered yes because that was one of the conditions. So. Right. So in follow-up, Mayor? Yes. So, you know, these businesses have, have had uh, funding that has likely uh, been forgiven or will be forgiven. Um, I would, with $259,000 from the general fund, uh, I would uh, agree with the mayor that let's, uh, let's tread carefully and exercise some discretion in, in immediately, you know, looking to forgive those loans also when they probably had the opportunity to have obtained forgivable loans, you know, outside of this program. Commissioner Fox. Thank you. I, one question on that topic. I was wondering, I can't remember when we put out this um, uh, grant or loan. I mean, did we call it a loan? Did they think they were applying for a loan or did they think there was a chance that it might be? Um... Yeah, it, it was definitely called a, a loan. However, and, and I see Rafael Clemente, I'll ask him to come up because I think there was some distinction possibly with some of the DDA loans or the DDA's board discussion on in terms of forgiveness. So Rafael, you want to talk about that a little bit? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, Rafael Clemente, Executive Director of the Downtown Development Authority. So when, um, when the city created the structure for the program and the DDA board contributed, uh, I think, two disbursements of, of dollars after we exhausted the first round, there was discussion of whether or not this becomes a forgivable program. However, that decision was not made. So I would definitely have to take this to my board. Um, however, um, thinking about... Uh, how we have dispersed funds to support businesses in good times and bad. Um, you know, we have used our business development dollars um, primarily as grant, as, as grant money to uh, do facade improvements and to do leasehold improvements inside structures um, in order to um, give businesses better footing to succeed over time. Um, you know, I, I think about this fund in the same way. Most of these grants were between five and ten thousand dollars, which is roughly what our facade grant program is, which is paint, signage, awnings, lighting, et cetera, on the exterior of a business. So I, I think my board would definitely be amenable to considering it if the city goes in that direction. However, your decision as as you know the biggest contributor to this and the one the entity who created the structure for the program will certainly weigh heavily on how my board would go. Would be my my gut sense. Thank you. Commissioner Lambert. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about what criteria we put in place on the application? I mean, we, we vetted these organizations. It looked like there was, I think you said 40 something that um, withdrew or didn't qualify. So we definitely had that in place. Yeah. In terms of criteria beyond this, there was some other criteria, for example, like they uh, couldn't have any liens on their property if they owned their property, had to have a, a business license with the city. So there was some other minor criteria, but this was the, the big criteria was this yeah. that you see here. I mean, I, I've certainly heard from many small business owners. Um, and, and so here they had to have gross revenues under a million dollars. So this is truly impacting our small businesses. Yes, definitely. This was, you know, and it doesn't have to be an all or nothing. I mean, one, thing you, one thing that could be a consideration would be, let's say, if they pay uh, half of the amount and then the other half is forgiven. Now, that's an example of something we can look at. Because there is a cost in terms of us administering this program. Even though Valley National Bank is doing a lot of it, we still have to keep the records and kind of follow through with this for the next five years. So that's something else to consider is, is kind of a hybrid. Do we know um, what other municipalities or governmental agencies are doing? What did the county do when they got money on the street? The county doing? provided a um, mostly grant pro uh, a grant program. Theirs was qu quite large and it was with federal monies. Yeah, so it, was it, all was, the federal it wasn't money. their dollars. Right, correct, it wasn't their now, dollars. Let, let me ask this, uh, and maybe Ms. Johnson can weigh in. When we applied for reimbursement to the county for monies, did we apply uh, for reimbursement of the two, the, uh, what is it, 250000 I'll have was to that check. I package? believe that was in there, but I'll have to check. Yeah. Do you know, Ms. Johnson? I don't recall off the top of my head, Mayor. We can, we'll look at that. Um, All right. Uh, you know, if we're going to get reimbursed by federal dollars, 
then I may look at this much differently. But if it's just our general uh, fund, uh, it's coming out of our general fund, we're not going to get reimbursed, and then I've got some concerns. But if it's part of the package we're looking to get reimbursed for, then sure, that makes it's sense. a different yeah, conversation. Absolutely. Chris, I think Chris Rube wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, Chris Rube, uh, Executive Director of the Community Redevelopment Agency. Mayor, to your point about what other municipalities are doing, it was something, um, it, there, there was a lot of listservs that were out there, I think, through uh, the Mayor's Innovation Project um, that I believe you're part of, part with, um, National League of Cities. Uh, when this was, when the pandemic was first taking hold, there was a ton of information sharing going on between cities. And um, we mimicked our program very similar to places like Seattle, Philadelphia. Um, I think there was a couple places in North Carolina. There wasn't too many in the state of Florida that we were modeling a lot of these recovery programs after um, because they initially all started as loans. Everybody was sort of scrambling on. Um, we were about middle of the road um, compared to other municipalities that were doing uh, loan or grant programs. The higher programs were around 25,000. Um, so we came in about 10, again, trying to affect as many small businesses as possible. And Commissioner Lambert, to your point about um, the 47 denied a little bit more on that criteria, the lion's share of those were primarily because they were outside the boundaries of the city. Um, the next one was we did have a credit criteria and we tried really, really hard to help everybody, but sometimes the credit scores just didn't allow that to occur. So that was probably the follow-up one. Okay, before we can give, or before I'd be willing to give uh, further direction, I would need an answer to that question as to whether it was part of our application package to the county for reimbursement. So maybe we could circle back around yes, after we have uh, that information. But meanwhile, uh, I do think this is a very good story to be told uh, about how this city uh, addressed COVID-19 and so can you work with communications and see if uh, uh, there's something uh, that uh, could be put together sure. which captures a lot of this information here uh, maybe even uh, you know two or three of those comments because uh, I, I think this is a the, 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 something that our citizens should be aware of how their their, their municipal government stepped up and uh, we should get the word out now put it in you know, one of my email blasts or something like that. So, yeah, so I mean, we were, we were the, definitely the first in the county, and I don't, we may have been the first in Florida. I don't remember seeing any other examples in Florida that quickly. So Yeah, so let's, let's work on that. Uh, Commissioner Fox. Thank you. Okay. I just have one question about this slide, the uh, filtration program. You mentioned that that was one of the things that would qualify for the money to be used for. What are other things? Was there, is it a category of things that it can be used for? Yeah, we'll be bringing that to City Commission at some point soon. But yeah, there's a number of things we can use it for. One of the things we're looking at uh, working with our fire rescue and, and emergency management team is uh, the ability to be able to distribute, if we get the vaccines in our hands, <laughs> distribute vaccines uh, on a very localized manner into targeted neighborhoods. And that would be one of the costs that we would use the CDBG funds for. And there's some other things we're looking at that we'll bring forward. Yeah, yeah Commissioner Beduzzi. Thank you, Mayor. And I think my opinion of the matter would certainly change if we were being reimbursed by the federal government. But one question I did have, because it was mentioned that the county had some grant programs that weren't structured as loans, but as grants, would our um, uh, businesses located within the municipal limits of the city of West Palm Beach have been eligible to apply for those county grants, or were they limited to, were those county grants limited to unincorporated areas? No, they, they could apply. They could. Yes. And those were federal, that, 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 that was county money, but it was federal money that the county had. Thank you. Commissioner Lambert. Thank you. Um, when you're getting us that updated information that the mayor had asked for, I'm curious if we could get, I, I'd love to know which of these businesses fall outside of the CRA. I think that it's important sure. that we're looking at those businesses as well, because while I'm I appreciate everything we do in the CRA. I want to make sure that our businesses outside of the CRA receive support as well. And and one other comment about, you know, my desire to see this as a grant rather than a loan is, you know, I think that when we did this, you know, in what I think it was 
May, June time frame when we first like April. April is when April, we, uh, wow. we started in March to put it I together mean, <laughs> in April, right? Was and I recall the phrase that we were using a lot was um, uh, flying the plane while we're putting it together. <laughs> I remember that, and I think that you know, had COVID lasted three months, six months, you know, that'd be a different story, but we're here a year later. And I think that our businesses are still hurting. And I think that the, you know, I'd like us to continue looking forward to um, possibly providing them as grants. But to, to somewhat answer your first uh, question, over half the funds that were spent were spent outside of DDA CRA district. So Great, thank you. At least over half of them. Yeah. Uh, and, and going back to uh, the question I asked, which Mr. Rube, I appreciate your responding to what uh, other uh, governmental agencies were doing. Um, and, it, and it sounded like most of them were structured as loans, if I heard you correctly. Yes, generally they were loans um, and grants. There was uh, a lot of hybrids between the two. The grants okay. were a little bit trickier. Um, just in order to, and that was more for like audit purposes to make sure that we were distributing them quickly. So that's why we went ahead and structured the loan program because it seemed to get it propped up. And again, to Commissioner Lambert's point about not really knowing what was gonna happen with everything, the loan seemed to be the, the safest um, way to distribute tax dollars on uh, a quick basis um, and still provide the level of accountability that I think everybody was comfortable with. Uh, the other question I have is I know we got, what, $50,000 from the Knight Foundation. Were there any strings attached to that, uh, suggesting that we'll give you this if you do loans? or What, 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 were, what were the terms of that? Correct. Um, if I recall correctly, the, the terms were to essentially take the 50000 and put it towards small business support in minority communities. Okay. And it was basically to go alongside with um, our program that was currently, they could just simply add more funding to an existing program. And that was the attractiveness of adding more money to a program that we already had underway. All right, so they didn't specify whether it had to be long. I'd have to go back and look at the grant agreement, but I don't believe so. All right, let's just make sure, because I don't want to um, have any unintended consequences if we do change. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll wait to get uh, information as to whether that's something we'll get reimbursed for from the county. Uh, Mayor, if, if I may, now we have that spreadsheet already prepared and it's very detailed on what we requested uh, reimbursement uh, from the county. The total is, uh, I think it's 801,000 and about uh, 500,000 of that is from the general fund. But given that the information is already detailed out, what's the preference of the board of having this come back at the next work session for a follow-up discussion on it? Uh, what's, what's the pleasure? Yeah, I mean, because I think staff is still looking for guidance, so we could do it at the next workshop. Okay, thank but you. Disseminate that information to the commissioners uh, as soon as you can, so they have time to think about it, digest it. We'll send it out promptly. Thank you. Uh, anything else, commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Lambert. And just to clarify, so we've already applied for all those funds and submitted a, a plan to the county? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, we, Where we, we submit that back in December? Yes, and and we've had, yes uh, back in December, and we've had several follow-up uh, email uh, conversations and verbal conversations with the county on the status of it. The very latest was that uh, they have confirmed that our uh, resubmittal uh, application for reimbursement is complete, that they don't require any further information from the city. It's going back through a number of reviews to make certain that, you know, everything is in order and we're just waiting for them to inform us how much of that is going to be reimbursed and when will the check be cut. And you can imagine, I, I would imagine that our request, us being the capital city, was probably larger than any other municipalities in the, in the county. But anyway. So we're just waiting for the check. <laughs> Anything else?